what we do here is go back, 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 back. There we go. I think we are possibly live. Good evening, everyone. If you uh, if you can see what's going on, where's the chat? Ah, there it is. Ah, I think. I'm not sure. I think this might be working. This is uh, my first attempt at using the new Google YouTube Studio thing, beta, go live thing. And it's uh, hopefully it's all right. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Hi Andrew from the US. If I'm looking around at the screen it's because I don't have my laptop here normally that I'd have to look at the, the chat and all that kind of stuff. So bear with us tonight. Kath is going to be relaying your messages to me. So if you hear Kath's dulcet tones over the airwaves then, uh, well, you know who she is. You probably won't see her face though because she's going to hide from the camera, but you might see a bit of reflecto porn in the side of the case if you look really carefully. You might have to pause it or watch this in the rerun and you'll see calf in her PJs. <laughs> oh dear. How's the um, uh, Seaman Knights in the house? Jack Thomas, good evening to you and evening Glenn as well. How's the, uh, the volume and audio levels and the lighting and all that kind of stuff? Is it looking all right? Is it looking a bit bright actually? I just looked at the light, I can't see a thing now. Uh, oh, whatever. Right, so it is. What day is it? I don't even know what day it is. Right, it's Saturday the 12th of October, and it's a little bit later than nine o'clock because, uh, well, it's Mike's unboxing. We always do things a little bit later around here. So tonight was going to be talking about general tech stuff, but actually I've got something which potentially is a little bit more interesting to some of you than uh, talking a little waffle, although we probably will be still talking a little waffle anyway, but we're going to try and do a live build. Now, when I say try is because this is so unprepared, it's unbelievable. Literally, I finished doing the unboxing on this case about, how long ago was it, Calf? About half an hour ago, if that. So half an hour ago, we finished doing the unboxing and the overview of the Silverstone RL08 or 08 case, which is a weird one. It's a micro ATX, but it's an upside down form factor. So for those of you that don't like upside down form factor builds, that's your cue to leave right now. But if you're uh, interested and you're curious about how I can manage to mess this up, then keep watching and uh, you will find out. So let's go through a quick rundown of the build components and then I'll have a quick look in the chat and say some hellos and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, obviously, the Silverstone RL08 case, micro ATX, as I said before. This case in the moment retails on Amazon in the UK for quite a lot of money, which is about £120. Now, in the video I've just filmed, I actually incorrectly said that it was about £70 or £80. Now, I'm not sure, maybe someone else can check in Scan or eBuyer or whatever and see what you can find these for. I'm pretty sure I've seen them before for around about £80, £70. So, I'm not sure where I got that idea from. Maybe I'm completely talking out my hat. But anyway, Silverstone sent it to me for a review, so I figured, hey, what the hell. I, uh, I did upside down micro ATX before, which was in the Rio Toro. I can't remember which model that was. Uh, but i got to be honest with you, I didn't... I didn't really like it. It didn't appeal to me. It didn't impress me. And uh, yeah, it soon went. But I'm going to give it another go because I think actually this case looks uh, pretty stylish. I don't know what you guys think. If you can see it, you can, suppose you, you can just like see it. You can see through the back of it there. But I think it actually looks quite nice. It's got that kind of storm loop, storm, storm trooper kind of look to it. The black on white or white on black or however you want to you want to see it. But I think it looks kind of nice. So that's the kind of theme on this. We're going to go black and white. Now, straight out the doors, if this doesn't work, which it probably won't, but if it doesn't work, you won't be seeing any RGB lighting because the fans on the front of this case actually have got a four pin, 12 volt RGB connection, but the case itself doesn't have any kind of RGB hub or splitters or anything like that at all to actually physically connect the fans to. So although I can connect them up to the three pin power supply for the fans, I can't control the RGB in any way so 
Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to show you that in this video. I have ordered them on Amazon and they are due tomorrow. So I was going to do the stream tomorrow night rather than tonight, but I thought, well, what the heck, let's get out of the way. And then maybe we might do a quick update stream or something um, just for some of you, just so you can see what it looks like when all the RGB is done and dusted. Although potentially this machine here may actually replace the one which is stuck behind me because it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, and it's going to be a little bit newer components inside. So that thing's been there for a good probably six months or so now. So it's probably about time that we swapped it around a little bit. So we probably will be doing that. The only thing is because this is upside down micro ATX, the glass panel is on the wrong side. So it won't be able to be seen like that. It will have to be on the other side of the unit behind me. So we might have to swap around the entire studio just to accommodate this thing. But that depends on how good it is and how easy it is to build with. Because if not, it'll go back in the box. Anyway, so that's the case. Uh, power supply wise is pretty important. Now this is, as you can probably see already from the screen, the Silverstone ST65F-GS, 650 watts, gold rated power supply. Now this is actually really good. It's at its absolute peak in performance, it ran about 50% usage. So around about the 325 watt mark is where it, this thing actually excels and will save you money. Now the power, the uh, the chip I'm going to be using is going to be the Ryzen 5 2600, which is a 65 watt part. The graphics card is going to be an RX 580 four gigabyte. So that I think is round about the 200, maybe 250 mark. It tops. So wattage wise, I think with those two components, we're going to be pretty much at the sweet spot of what this power supply is going to be able to use and actually stay. Um, cost efficient or yeah efficient and heat rating and all that kind of stuff anyway so that is apparent that's a fully modular so that's gonna be really nice to use and gonna be nice and easy to do the cable management uh, processor as we said the Ryzen 5 2600 cooling wise now this is where things get a little bit kind of mm, what are we gonna do so cooling wise potentially we could just go <laughs> drop in everything and use the stock AMD cooler which it is black and white after all, so that could work, but I'm not entirely convinced. Um, another option, which actually I'm open to your opinions here, guys and girls, uh, let me know what you think. What would you prefer me to use? Now, it's only a 65 watt part. I probably won't be overclocking it very much, if at all. So there isn't really great need for massive cooling, but saying that, it is nice to have things nice and quiet. So potentially we could use this. This is the Arctic Freezer 33, again, black and white so it fits in really nicely with the theme of the build so maybe you would like to see that I don't know again let me know in the comments or another option which is down here somewhere uh, is another one of these the Cooler Master Master Liquid Light 240 now this case can support radiators in the top and in the front um, in the front it's going to be a little bit more problem, well sorry, in the rear, in the top even, it's going to be a little bit more problematic because there isn't a lot of clearance so that is going to give us some challenges. But I think in the front, if we do this as a positive pressure setup with the two RGB fans actually attached to the radiator, then possibly the two Cooler Master fans that are included in the top pushing air in because the graphics card is going to be along here facing with the fans kind of up. So this is going to push 240 mils worth of fresh air straight into the graphics card to keep that nice and cool. And then we've only got just one rear exhaust fan taking hot air out. So this is going to be positive pressure, two in, well, four in, one out. So there's going to be a lot of positive pressure there, which is going to keep dust to an absolute minimum. And with the graphics card being cooled by those essentially four uh, fans, two on the card, two in there, the cooler is going to be pretty good anyway. So this thing should be pretty silent and pretty cold. So, again, okay. I haven't looked at the comments yet, but I will do very shortly and see what you think I should do. There is potentially another option of putting some NZXT fans in. Again, I've picked these out because they are black and white. So potentially I could put those in the top to create that positive pressure and just stick with the either the freezer or the stock cooler. I am actually, for simplicity, I am considering the stock cooler, which I, could, I don't know. 
Maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not. The downdraft of it is good for the VRMs on the motherboard, which is going to be the ASRock B450M Steel Legend, which is going to be RGB overkill, but we're going to set all the uh, LEDs to white because we're going black and white and maybe a little bit of silver and a little bit of aluminium. So it's going to be a very kind of tonal build, I think. Uh, Storage wise, we're going with a Crucial BX240. The reason I'm using this is because literally it was in another PC I built and it's got essentially the same setup as that. So it'd be quite easy just to put the drive in and it should just boot up and work. Although it might need a few drivers, that kind of thing. But essentially it should work and it's activated and all that kind of stuff. Memory wise, we are going with the Silicon Power X Power. Now this is the only thing which is actually is a bit of a fly in the ointment. I would have preferred to use RGB RAM and set it to white, which again, potentially I might do because I've got the G-Skill 2133 RAM in there, but it's a little bit slow. And being this is a Ryzen second generation or 2000 series, it is gonna appreciate slightly faster RAM. It is gonna run better. And if I put the slower RAM in there, I think C McKnight would probably have some kind of cardiac arrest and tell me that I need to put a faster RAM in. So even though this is blue, it might go in. I might have to get the uh, the spray can out on these or even just remove the heat spreaders actually. But that is the RAM I am planning to use. So I think that is pretty much it. So yeah, case, power supply, motherboard, processor, graphics card, which we touched on quickly. This is just a uh, power color. I think it's power color. This is the one I replaced the fans on ages ago. This actually had Arctic cooling fans on it not too long ago, but it's uh, a four gig. RTX, uh, RTX, I wish, uh, RX 580. So I think that's gonna pretty much do the job. It's, uh, considering the rest of the components, I think it's gonna be a relatively balanced build. The graphics card is gonna be probably the bottleneck, if anything. The Ryzen 5 2600 will work quite happily with a better graphics card. I did actually buy a Sapphire RX 580 8GB Nitro Plus in RGB, but I put it in the PC behind me and because of all the RGB bling in there, I actually think that works really well in there. So I might well be leaving that in there. And actually another thing that comes to mind, I actually bought that graphics card to help out with the streaming because some of the streams have been a little bit iffy and the colors have been off in the, the bit rates and what have you. And I primarily put it down to the graphics card, not actually doing what I should do. because I have been using the AMD hardware acceleration for OBS. And I'm just wondering actually if you could tell me, is the is the picture looking better? Have we got a better quality? Is the bit rate better? Are we getting kind of pixelation or whatever? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna turn my head around and see what is going on in the chat and see what is new. So, oh, there's quite a lot to catch up on. So you have to look at the side of my head for a little while or just look at the case. It's probably uh, much prettier. So in the chat, we've got Jack Thomas, we've got Glenn, Andrew, Kath. Oh, hi, Kath. Well, so we've got everyone see at night. Captain Meets Adventures. If you, uh, if you want to see something quite surreal, quite strange, head on over to Captain Meets Adventures. And uh, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Uh, Glenn says it's looking good. Uh, Captain Meets Adventures, what is everyone drinking? That's a good question. Now, this is sad. This is how bad things have got here at Mike's Unboxing. We have actually, this, I can only call it piss colored drink, is actually Coca-Cola watered down because the kids have drank the last of the Coca-Cola and literally there was like a tiny little bit. So I filled up the rest of water. That is what is happening here. It actually tastes quite good. I quite like watered down cola. It's like when you've had the ice cubes and it's all melted. I'll pretend that's what's happened. Um, we also got Click Tech Kev is in the house. Waffle Waffle. <laughs> yeah, Kev's already said Mike has cheap diluted Coke. Uh, Captain Meets Adventure says apparently there's a load of new Google products coming next week. Oh God, hopefully it's a, a set of lights. Like RGB, not RGB, um, controlled lights because my DEN system which some of you may have seen before. Looks like it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's packed in, I'm not sure. We're still working out, trying to work out what's going on. I've got a flashing light on the hub and the lights aren't working by voice commands through Google, but they're working through the app. So I don't know what is going on there. Uh, Seaman Knight says, 
Oh, 112 pounds delivered from Scan for that case, okay. Still quite expensive for a micro ATX case though, I think, isn't it? I don't know whether, like, I've been very lucky that Silverstone have reached out and sent it to me. I honestly don't know whether, me personally, whether I would go out and spend that kind of money on a micro ATX case, especially when there's a few compromises like the upside down build. Now, actually, going back to that quickly, this is an upside down ATX, or micro ATX rather. The simple fact of the matter is, if they'd have made this so that the, it was micro ATX normal, and even if they did an ATX version slightly bigger, I would say that this is possibly one of the best cases on the market, which is weird because I'm hesitant about the upside down bit of it. But other than that, I was looking at it earlier and working out if I could retool it in some way to make it the, the right way up. And I can't because of the way it's built. But if they did a version of this where it was regular micro ATX or regular ATX, this would be probably the best case on the market. And I would definitely, definitely buy one. I wouldn't even hesitate. But because of that upside down ATX, it really does put a bit of a, a stumbling block for me. I don't know if it's just like a mindset thing or whether it's an aesthetics thing, I don't know. But anyway, moving on. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da. What else we got in the live chat? Uh, can control one fan. Yeah, Seaman Light says, can control one fan from the motherboard. Um, no, unfortunately, because the fans that are on there, the RGB, I think you're probably referring to, they've got the male pins on them, same as the motherboard. So you'd need um, a, a female to female adapter to actually attach one. So it is designed purely for attaching to some kind of control box, which weirdly they haven't included. I don't know whether this is because this is a, a new thing and they've sent it out as a kind of production sample or what, or maybe the finished version might have that included, which I think it should do to be fair. I think it would actually make it a more rounded product. <laughs> Click Tech Kev says, uh, are you going for a speed build record or shall I make myself comfy? I certainly, I would make yourself comfortable. If you need to go to the toilet, I would go now, get it out of the way. Bucket. Get a bucket. Yeah, get, get a bucket or some kind of receptacle or catheterize yourself if you uh, know how to. This could, uh, yeah, this could end up like one of uh, Mr. Holzman's builds where it spans out over a couple of weeks and it still doesn't get finished. But we'll see. Uh, what else we got? Seaman Knight says gone high end. Gone high end on the PSU. Yeah, the high, the PSU is probably the highest. Well, the power supply and the case are probably the highest end components, bizarrely. But then saying that, the power supply really. Over the years, I probably have skimped on power supplies, and I've not done my builds justice by using cheaper power supplies. The Rio Toro ones I've used recently have been very good. But some of the other ones, some of the more budget oriented ones, in hindsight now looking back, they were probably mistakes and I should have spent more money. Um, they didn't necessarily cause me any problems that I was aware of, but it is always nice to have that bit of extra reliability from a decent power supply. And that one actually, the uh, ST65, is pretty much on par, if not the same, as the EVGA G3, I think it is, 650 watt gold modular, which is uh, in and around the same sort of price point. So. Most people, I think, would probably agree that the G3 is actually a fantastic power supply. And being that the Silverstone is essentially the same spec with possibly a slightly better ripple suppression and also has four individual PCI Express outputs rather than the G3's two, which are then doubled on the cable. For me, that actually is a really decent power supply. I'll uh, look forward to your comments and see what, see what you think about that. Uh, Click Tech UK, Kev says use the freezer, use the air cooler and overclock that bad boy. The freezer is a little bit more complicated. Yeah, Tom, evening to you. Uh, freezer, 240mm AIO, yeah, see what I'm saying. Uh, da -da -da -da. What else we got? Use the other way. Wow, there's a lot more chats. Oh, Captain Me's Adventures has sent us a five pound super chat. Thank you very much. And as you can, oh, you probably can't see, you have set off the lights, which means Caf has to get up again and turn the lights off before that all goes off. There we go. 
<laughs> Five pound super chat from Captain Meets Adventures. God bless you. That is gone towards Mike's proper drink fund. <laughs> and Lord knows I need it. Uh, Seamanite says he has the G3 and it's been great. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, just read another comment there from Kev. Tell me how, to, oh, that's to calf actually. Tell me how to screw with confidence. I'm not sure about that. Tom Brown, so should I get the Silverstone SFX 650 watt PSU or the Corsair 600 watt SFX PSU? Both are around the same price. Um, to be honest with the Corsair 600 watt and the Silverstone, I would say really it's, um, that's a pretty tough call. I would say if you're not sure, go to um, Johnny Guru and do a search there and see what his, his results are. I find Johnny Guru's testing on power supplies to be absolutely amazing and he's been doing it for a long time and he does it with a bit of humor as well so it's worth looking at that will probably give you a better idea i personally would go probably for the higher wattage one but then again i would also look at pricing and i'd imagine the corsair and the silverstone are probably very close actually in um, build quality wise although the silverstone might just take it silverstone are well known for kind of very good build quality not necessarily being cheap but good build quality and Aletta, Aletta is in the chat. So we were in last week's chat, I think it's last week's chat and possibly the week before, we were a little bit concerned that Aletta hadn't been, uh, hadn't been around, we hadn't seen her posts or anything and it appears everything is okay. She's just been really busy uh, writing and other commitments. So basically she abolished herself from social media, but it's nice to see you, uh, you back in the fold. Uh, Tom Brown says cool it with liquid nitrogen and Aletta says that water cooling is the only way to go. I've got to be honest with you, because the Cooler Master Cooler has got the white LED in the middle of the, uh, the pump as you can see back there, that is probably going to be the way I'm going to go with this. As much as it's going to be a right royal pain in the ass to move all the fans and stuff around, but hey, why not? What have we got to lose? Uh, Tom Brown says Johnny Guru makes very good reviews, that is a great idea, thank you. So top, yeah, it says that both of them are around about £100, although the Silverstone one is around £10 more. Mm, yeah. It's, a, it's always a tough call with power supplies. There's always a kind of a fractional difference between them. And it, essentially it comes down to build quality. I suppose um, reliability is uh, one to look at, but then they're all pretty reliable. But then also warranty. Warranty is a really good one to look at. Some of the new uh, Cooler Master power supplies, I think it's the, oh, what, I think, it's, is it the R series? I think it's the R series. Basically, if it fails within the six first months, they'll give you a full refund. They'll send you a new one, but they'll give you a refund as well, which I think is pretty incredible. Uh, let's just take the day off from writing today. Uh, Tom Brown says warranty is a good idea. Didn't think of that. Right, okay. So let's uh, let's see how this goes. And incredibly, I don't know how, but we seem to have 20 viewers, which is very strange. But thank you all for joining in anyway. Let's, uh, let's get on with this. Actually, that's really weird because I haven't put any tags on this video and that's why I've put some really weird tags that are just bringing people in. If I've put weird tags and that's why you're here, I do apologize because I don't remember doing it. Anyway, right, where should we start with? I suppose we should clear the deck a little bit and make ourselves a little bit of room. So. We don't need that. We don't need. Well, we don't we, need that glass on it. Yeah, I don't need this glass because I'm bound to knock this over. <coughs> what glass? On the case. Oh yeah, I better take the glass off the side of the case so calf doesn't get compromised in any reflective uh, pornographies. Although for some of you that will probably be the only reason you're here. <laughs> Actually, this case, for those of you that, uh, well, you won't have seen the review because I've only filmed it today and I haven't edited it, so you won't see it. But when I do actually do the review, you can probably tell I'm so torn by this case. It, it screams quality. Actually, everything, the touch, the feel, the build, everything, the filtration and all that, it, uh, it does actually scream quality. But... The upside down micro ATX is just really messing with my head. <clears throat> right, so we don't need that, we don't need that. We're still undecided about the cooler. What are we saying? Are we going to go water cooling on this? Yeah, let's go water cooling. 
in for a penny, in for a pound. So let's, where is the, oh, where did I put that? Oh, there it is. Right, so water cooking it is. We'll go for the mass liquid light 240. And we don't need the box for that anymore. And those are the blanking strips, which they can go back in there, so I don't lose them. See, building a PC is actually really easy, but you need to keep yourself pretty organized, which isn't very easy for me, because I've got a very small working space of probably, what, a meter by a meter, it's not great. But people have done more with less, so we'll see how we get on. So I don't need those screws for now. So we've got some MX4 and we've got some thermal grease. Although I might just use the stuff that comes with the master liquid. I uh, don't need the RAM for now because that's going to go on to the motherboard. Let's leave that there. Power supply, we can get what we need from that in a little bit. And we've got an RGB strip which is looking very lonely there, which hopefully is going to end up in here somewhere. Um, yeah, all right. We'll look at that later. So that is pretty much the deck cleared. So let's get the motherboard ready first of all, I think. So like we said before, we've got the uh, B450M Steel Legend, which is actually a really nice looking board. And we've got our nice camo print backplate, or IO shield as it's known. The board itself, so I don't think we need anything else in there at present. Don't need that anymore. And there we go, there's the board. Now this is another thing which really upsets me, the fact that this is upside down ATX, the micro ATX, I keep on saying that wrong. Because that looks really nice, doesn't it? That way up, I think it does look, the, the, the I was gonna say something else, but I'm not gonna say that word. That doesn't look right to me. I really, really wish that was regular ATX, uh, micro ATX now. Oh, I keep on saying that wrong. That's really annoying me. Anyway, right. So let's get everything put on this board. So normally, if you can, if at all possible, it's ideal to try and get these things onto a anti-static device of some sort. Now actually, speaking of which, I actually need to look to see what the memory configuration is on this because I haven't actually looked yet. So if we want dual rate uh, A1, no, A2 and B2, A2, B2, that's unusual. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves or talk to Kath. Turn the case upside down. Turn the case upside down, yeah. That's not a bad idea actually. Do you know what? I did actually look at that, I did think can I put the feet on the top and do it that way? And I did work out all kinds of weird things in my head. And no, the, the bottom bit does look crap. Which it should do. Oh yeah, I didn't bring my, um, my zip ties or my pen knife. I've got my Swiss Army wife, Kath, she is useful for very many situations. And uh, don't forget you need your tweezers when you're doing this. Got a nice set of tweezers for... Ooh. That's for all you ASMR lovers out there. <laughs> right, so that is the memory on the board. Now that's pretty simple, basically. You leave a, a gap between them for dual channel on this board, so that's pretty straightforward and simple. So next we'll put a CPU in. So CPU installation, literally just unlatch the lever or a lever, depending on which part of the world you're in. And on the, the actual socket, there is a pin in one corner or an arrow in one corner. And on the CPU, there's also an arrow. So all you do is line up one arrow with the other and place the CPU on top. And you should find that it just sits into the pins all by itself. Sometimes if your pins might be a little bit damaged, maybe if you bought a second hand or used CPU, then if it's not quite sitting flush in there, what you can do is just rock the lever or lever, rock the lever gently, and actually that will slightly move the bottom plate and wiggle it around. So if you imagine you kind of got 
two sets of holes and it's kind of, you're doing that with it, just moving them slightly offset. So if there's something waiting to go down through, because you're wiggling it, eventually it'll just sit in flush. Now you, you can, if you wanted to, you can put apply a very slight amount of pressure on the top just to hold it in place, but generally you shouldn't need to. And just put the lever down and let it latch into place. And that essentially is it. Now, at this point, it would also be good if you've got an M.2 drive to stick that in. It makes it a lot easier to do it when it's on a flat surface like this. Uh, but I'm going to be using, like I said, I'm going to be using the Crucial drive. And actually, I've got blue on there. I've got blue on there. The power supply's got a little bit of blue on the cable in. Cooler Master's got a bit of blue on it. The RAM. The lights can be set to blue. So maybe we might go blue and white. Blue, white, and black. Hmm. Although we're not going to see that, so what do you think? Should I spray paint the ram sticks? I'm, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to definitely do that at some point. I'm not going to do it now because, uh, well, yeah, that's asking for a whole heap of trouble. So we're not going to be doing that. So that essentially is pretty much all we need to do. Skywalkers in the house. Oh, Kafta says Sky Stalkers in the house. Good evening to you, my friend. It's cooking Thanksgiving dinner, so he's in the Thanksgiving dinner? When the hell is Thanksgiving? That's not for months, is it? Next week. Oh, doing a run-up. I'm looking at the, the chat here. Wiggle it a little bit. I want to see you wiggle it. Wiggle it and it will slip right in. Hashtag 18 plus. <laughs> One guy sued his parents for giving birth to them without his consent. Damn it, that's just ridiculous. Skystalker says, early in Canada. Tom Brown, Thanksgiving is the 23rd of no November. Got it. <laughs> okay, right, so that's, I think that's pretty much all I need to do on the motherboard. I've got to be honest with you, brain is completely fried, not a clue. So next thing to do is to put the back plate into the, the case. Now this isn't as easy as you think it is normally because when you're doing this, in a normal event, you'd be like, okay, that's no problem. It's a regular ATX and you know where everything goes and the keyboard's up there at the top and the USBs and it goes down like that and you've got your audio in the middle. But as soon as you turn it upside down, because you've got to put it in an upside down case, it really does mess with your head. So I'm going to put this in now. now unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see this particularly well. Oh crap, what's that? Well, they're saying that, actually, if I put the other camera on, uh, what camera is that on? Number four. Let's try to see if this works. It might do. I'll just press number four. Is that changing? I'll have to wait until it comes on there. You never know. Hey, there you go. You can see the other angle now. And if you look really carefully, you can probably see Calf's pants in the background. I know you can. Okay. Hopefully you guys have still got sound. So this now, rather than going up like that, as you would traditionally, is now got to go like this. <laughs> So, so we'll start from the bottom. Yeah, I think that's in pretty nicely. It's really off-putting doing this upside down. It really is very, very odd indeed. Now that doesn't look like it's in properly. Yeah, that's better. Hmm? Cool, nice board. Okay, so what I might do is I might take that fan out of there now just to give myself a little bit of room. Where's my screwdriver? Oh, there it is. So because of where this um, cooling fan is at the moment, we're gonna take it out just to give ourselves a little bit of uh, working room. We can always put it in a little bit later. But not too late so as we don't uh, get a chance to plug in the header on the board because that is always a pain, especially on these kind of builds where it's all tucked away. So let's stick that over there. So there we go, got our IO shield in there, so hopefully you can all see that okay. It doesn't, does it? No, it looks, it looks like it's slightly off. But no, it does. I can't use much more force than that, so we're all good. So take the side panel off. 
non-captive screws in here, which is a bit of a pain. Yeah, it does a bit. The, the IO shield does look a bit odd with that camo stuff on it. It's a bit pointless as well because you'd never really see it. But there you go. Um, now, what do I want to put in here? Right, I think next we're going to go with the power supply. So let's put the camera back on. So that's number two, I think. <laughs> Full of confidence. Let's move the tweezers. They need the tweezers. Hmm? Oh, nice. It does a bit, actually. Oh, yeah, calf can't hear. If you guys can't hear calf, I do apologise. She doesn't speak very loud. She's very, uh, very quiet. So, um, somebody in the chat just said that the, uh, the back plate looks like bird poo. It does a little bit. So let's do a quick unboxing of this. Oh no, already done that <laughs> twice today already. <laughs> so there's a power supply. It's pretty sweet. And it's pretty, pretty small. Now there is a video coming, a review on this. And it's got an absolute shit ton of cables. The one thing I didn't mention in the video, it comes with the American plug, which to me is uh, not a great deal use. I think that's American. Is that American or is that uh, European? I don't know. Right, so let's go through and work out which cables we're actually going to need because we don't want to put all the cables in because that's just a pain in the butt to organize. So graphics card wise, we only need one eight pin connector. So we can just use one graphics card cable. In some cases, it might be an idea to put both in at the same time, but um, I don't see me swapping over the graphics card in the near future. So I think it's going to be fine. And if it all goes really badly wrong, I'll be taking it all apart later on anyway, so there'll be no point. European plug. European plug, thank you very much. American Street. Uh, so all we need now is one SATA connector for the hard drive, so we'll have one of those as well. And we've got our main power, so we just need our four pin EPS for the motherboard, and I think that is it. Don't need anything else at the moment. Uh, I think that is pretty much us good to go. So with power supplies, when you're putting a power supply in, it is generally easier if at all possible. Get your cables, get your wires done, get all that out of the way, get it installed in the case and then do your motherboard because you sometimes find if you put the motherboard in, then you're actually trapping some of the areas of where you want to bring a cable through. In some instances, you may want to pre-route stuff, if that makes sense. Um, Andrew's asking a question about graphics cards and why I haven't made other decisions. Um, I'll, have to, I'll have to read that again actually to, to see what the question is. A quick question. Why don't you save a little bit of money and go for an RX 588 gig or dish out more for the RX 588 gig? Um, well, that, actually this card I swapped for a GTX 970 months ago. And it's actually, it turned out originally, it, there was, it was getting some graphical errors on the screen, and it turned out it was because one of the fans had failed. So um, I think CAF's probably going to link to a video that we did on that already. Um, I think it was the Arctic Cooling one, wasn't it? Is it Arctic Cooling where we added the fans on? The custom fans. Yeah, custom fans, yeah. So yeah, basically we got the graphics card cheap as a, as a bit of a deal. So that's why I've used it really. It's actually quite a good little card. It plays Rocket League and all those kinds of things really nicely. I've got no complaints about it whatsoever. So we want to use our SATA, so we'll take one of these blanking plugs off. This is quite a nice thing, I'm not sure if this is the same on most power supplies these days, but there's actually blanking plugs over the unused connectors. So if you're not using them, it stops them all getting dusty and stuff like that. Or potentially, if there's water in there, it would prevent any sort of ingress of water which again is uh, quite nice. Now, what have I done now? Where did I put my blue cable? I haven't put it away already. I didn't even oh, there it is. 
the RC Blues. And the only thing I'm a bit concerned about are these cables. I'm not sure if they're going to be quite long enough because of this upside down scenario. Because that actually needs to be routed all the way around the back. But anyway, we will see. So our four pin EPS is that one there. In actual fact, yeah, there's actually two EPS eight pin connectors actually on the power supply. So if you're using a new motherboard or um, X570, that kind of stuff, or some of the Threadripper boards, then you can actually get an additional cable. They don't supply it, weirdly, but it is an option. <laughs> ah, bless me. Woo! <laughs> oh, that's waking me up. And made me pee a little bit. Right, so let's get this power supply in. Now, there's no mounting brackets or anything for this, so it's uh, slot it in and hook it round. Oh, that's the cats knocking stuff off. Oh, actually, that is pretty tight in there. Does the PSU have an eco switch? Uh, no eco switch on this PSU. No. Which, I actually, I've always wondered, what do those eco switches actually do? Apart from make it eco. Maybe but how does that work? What's that? Maybe that's why you need to Yeah. Probably. Right, I need to find some screws now to put this in because they didn't supply any screws either, which is a little bit odd. Again, it's come from Silverstone directly for review, sample, all that kind of stuff. So possibly if you were to buy the retail product, you'd get a little bit more. Um, I've got to be honest with you, I don't know entirely for sure. For sure, to be sure. So we want some coarse threaded screws for this, which normally I have an abundance of either in my pocket or on a desk somewhere, but for some reason, in this particular instance, I think. So we'll put the four screws in. I'm not gonna do them up completely tight to begin with. There is actually some really nice rubber grommets on the bottom of this to uh, hold it all in place. Actually on the power supply, like power, uh, sound deadening pads, I guess you'd call them. Uh, that fits in nicely, why does that not one? Not want to go in. That threads a little bit on the tight side. It's a shame actually, this uh, power supply is a nice looking power supply, but you can't see it because it's uh, hidden under that basement. But I suppose it's only a power supply. And ultimately, most PCs, when they're done, either end up on a desk or on the side of a desk somewhere. So generally, you're not going to see much of it anyway. So what have we got here? So we've got our SATA, which we'll route that around the back. And we've got our four pin EPS, which actually would go up to the top in most systems. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Although in this particular instance, we're just gonna put it straight up through there and let it bend round because that is gonna be in that top corner, which actually you probably can't see very well from there. So where, which button is it? Oh, let's forget this, number four. Number four, did I press four then? Yeah, probably. So hopefully you people can see this a little bit easier from that side. So we've got our EPS, which is going up through there. Sorry for the crappy camera. It's all I can afford. So the graphics card one, now the graphics card one's actually gonna be a problem, I think, because that's gotta go through there and then into a graphics card, which is kind of there. I don't think that's gonna reach. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's not gonna reach, which is a major, major pain, because I don't wanna take it through there. Can I get any more length on that? I don't think I can. Hmm. Yeah, because ideally you want to run that through there. First world problems, my friends. First world problems. Yeah, there's no way you're gonna fit into there. It's about two inches too short. That's what she said. So. Um. 
What do you think I should do, chat? Let me know. Uh, what do you reckon, guys? Do you reckon just another cable? I have got some extensions, but that is potentially a big issue, isn't it? For most, because I could take it through there, but that's going to remove the cleanliness of the build. You've got this big, let's spin that round. So let's go back to camera number two. I think it's number two. Oh, I forget these numbers. So this is the problem we're faced with here. So we've got our four pin graphics card cable, but we don't really want it sticking out the front here and going all the way up there, because that's just going to look awful. But I don't think, unless I'm doing something completely wrong, I don't think we've got enough length to take it through the other way. It's not stuck in there on anything. So even if I take it from behind the motherboard and then around, which is not ideal. Ken said that you've got an extension, you do that. Yeah. I do have an extension, but that is kind of defeats the objects. So most people are gonna have a power supply or a this kind of setup. So how are you gonna do it? See that's what you don't always see when you people do reviews in cases and stuff. They go ahead, talk about all the specs, blah, 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 but you don't always get to see the things that can go wrong. Like now. Yeah, that is not, not great. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna have to run the cable at the back there and put an extension on. Which I've got to be honest with you, I'm not particularly happy with. That sucks. Hey ho, we move on. So what else have we got here? So that is the EPS connector, which we've already pulled out and put through again. So let's put that back through there. That can hang out there. The 24 pin is going to come through and hang out there. Turn that ring, that's good. Yeah, pre, pre doing your wiring is a, a little bit boring and stuff, but it can actually save you a lot of time later on down the road when, uh, when you don't want to be messing around. Now, hard drive wise, yeah, we'll probably, I'll actually, I think I'll probably put it in the caddy down there. So let's tuck that wire away down there. Double piece. Um, no, it doesn't. It comes with a single PCIe cable, but it comes with four of them. There's four headers on there. Angel. Well, that's a noise. Uh, okay. Right then, let's get the, what should we get in next? Sky Stalker has just realized it is an inverted case. Um, what is the point? And um, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of, I'm with you on that one at the moment. What is the point? I, I honestly don't get it. I really don't, I genuinely don't understand the need for an inverted ATX. It doesn't make any sense at all. It really doesn't. If anything, it just makes things a lot harder to do. And like I said, this case, if it was regular uh, traditional micro ATX, I think it would actually be possibly or potentially a, a perfect setup. Hmm? What, what, what is my favorite pack of RGB fans? Um, yeah, the Asia Horse ones, actually, I think I had those before, did I have the, I had the Solar Eclipse, the Mark 1, I think, which were, uh, they, they were pretty good. Now, what I'm going to have to do is take these fans out, because I'm going to have to mount them to the radiator, or, 
potentially put them in the top. Although that's going to look crap. Hmm. Well, actually, saying that, being that I don't have the RGB connector for these fans at the moment, maybe I will take them out altogether for now. Um, we'll just not go with all that RGB bling. Which is actually a bit of a shame, because that is part and parcel of why this case is actually a little bit more expensive, because it has got RGB fans included. Uh, Tristan's asking, is this the case that I reviewed the other day? It's, uh, no, this is the Silverstone. That one was the XPG Invader, which actually, if this goes uh, as wrong as I think is going to go wrong, this will make, um, may come back out of here and go back in there. But we'll see. It might turn out okay. It might not, but we'll give it a go. So this is it then. Last chance saloon do we go with the cooler master cooling or do we go with air cooling i think probably the cooler master is the way to go and we'll stick that in before we've got too much more stuff in here this could turn out to be a proper verge mark ii couldn't it i could be vilified and hated universally more so I knew I should have set this up previous. previous. Now this cooler was absolute steel, which is why I'm actually not too concerned about using it. It actually cost, uh, was it 20, 22 pounds 80 or 22 pounds 60? Some crazy, crazy low amount, which I should have thought to myself at the time, alarm bells should have been ringing. But, Ah, right. Yeah, that's the one I wanted then. Uh, actually, that's going to... That's going to be a potential problem as well. Because those bolts stick out the front into the case, so they're going to have to be in front. So that might not work either because of that mesh on the front. This has turned out to be a real ball lake. So... Essentially, when this case is, or when this cooler is all set up, actually, should we just call this a day and should we just go and watch El Camino? <laughs> right, let's get out of the way. So yeah, if I put that there, then I can't use the filter because the screws for the fans ideally want to be on the front. Again, they don't have to be. So I'm going to have to mount this radiator out, fan side in, which again isn't particularly great. Hmm. Good evening, Harvey, and good evening to everyone. Thanks for all uh, stopping by and watching what is potentially going to be the car crash TV equivalent of, uh, well, I don't know. Christ Walker's saying, building live with an AIO is going to be interesting in case that's already proven to be challenging. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm like. Let's, uh, let's just make things more difficult, why not? So that needs to come out of that side, so that way round. Yeah, this is... Uh, not one of my better ideas. They're all saying use air. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm invested in this now. Actually, this probably be all right. Yeah, this goes. This might work out okay. And luckily this has got thumb screws, so they go in pretty quickly. And actually another reason for me liking this is the uh, mounting mechanism for AM4, 
is actually really cool on this. It just, uh, it's like the old fashioned clips, like the AM3 clips. So for those of you that are old enough to remember the AMD FX range and all that kind of stuff. Oh, piss. Sorry, put that fan on around the wrong way. Got a push pull, but on the same radiator. I thought this was going too well. <laughs> As if this is going well. What time is it anyway? Ooh. So let's see. Now I was considering tonight discussing the goings on in the uh, the Blizzard game competition. I don't know if any of you have been following that recently, where there was a um, I think it's World of Warcraft competition over in China or somewhere, and basically the winner made a comment, a political comment about the country and what was going on about the. Um, Whatever it was, let's not get bogged down by details, but essentially it caused the right shitstorm and they took away his winnings from the competition, even though he won the competition fair and square, but he was told prior in the, uh, the terms of engagement and all that kind of stuff that he was not to mention anything to do with the uh, political stuff. And he decided that he was gonna do it, sorry. They did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Linus's WAN show was amazing. That really was a work of art. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're in China, you you can have an opinion. You're just not allowed to share it or do anything with it. Are oh, you absolute? Bastard. No offense. All right, will this go any higher? Oh, this is such a stupid design. Okay, so it says in the book you can use a 240 mil radiator or a 280 mil radiator up front. What they've probably forgotten to say is you'd have to take out the uh, the drive mounting. So let's drop that down a little bit. This could work. I should do this in the uh, the style of Lyle, but then that's probably going by the uh, the current kind of climate. That's probably a bad idea. It's funny how things change so quickly. Oh, don't you dare. Okay. So this isn't going to look particularly great up front now, which is a little bit of a shame. I suppose I could always at some point put the other fans back on and have a kind of push-pull setup going on. And there we go, we've got full filtration, so our radiator is going to stay nice and clean and clear. And actually, if I get rid of this, it feels a bit bad actually putting a master liquid cooler in a Silverstone case, being that Silverstone actually do make coolers, and pretty good ones at that. So that is what we're left with. So you can all get a good view of that. Uh, that is for that, that and that, that and that. So what do we need from this little bag of tricks? So they give you this horrible thing, Cooler Master. This is a fan splitter for the uh, the Cooler fans to plug into the header on the motherboard. But that just looks gross, doesn't it? Absolutely gross. So we won't be using that. And we won't be using those. We won't be using those. Oh, we do need some screws from in here though. I think. It probably would have been a good idea to put those on first actually, but. 
good ideas and me don't always mix. Yeah, the, um, the WAN show today was actually quite interesting because you could see that people weren't really getting what was going on and uh, Linus and Luke were getting kind of vilified. But I think it's because people don't listen. People just tend to get triggered and then go off on their own little tangents after, which is uh, pretty sad, really. But it does happen. Now, how the heck does this work? Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, they are not your cables, that's for sure. Grippy grippy. So this actually should look quite nice when it's in. Although saying that, oh you absolute asshole. That's not gonna reach, is it? And now the Cooler Master logo is gonna be upside down. Oh god. Like everything else in this damn build. <laughs> yeah, Cap luckily Calf's used to it. I've been building PCs now, what, since... When did we get our PC? What year did we get married? We got married in 1996. And with some of our wedding money that we got, we bought a PC. And that was the beginning of the end <laughs> for, for us. We, uh, well, we actually we had some good times. We actually had one of the very, very early dot matrix color printers. Now, if you've never heard of what a dot matrix printer is like, essentially it's like being tattooed, I would say. Do you agree? Not that I've been tattooed, but... Yeah, it had a, a, three colored ribbons inside it, and it was, uh, yeah, it wasn't the fastest of things. Now, actually, when we first got online, now this is a sign of the times now. Open up a tab on your browser and type in uh, Matt Goss. Now chances are you'll probably get a few million results. Now when me and Kath first went on the internet back in 1996, maybe 97, you could type in Matt Goss in a search engine and you'd get no results. Literally there was no websites or no things that had the mention of the Matt Goss. This is like a guy who used to be in Bross years ago in the 80s or 90s or whenever it was. Calf was a Brosset, etc. You get the idea. So you'd search for things that you'd uh, seen years ago. But literally, you could search for things and there would be no results. The internet was a completely different place than what it is now. Advertising, no one had even thought about advertising. It's like, what? You can advertise on the internet? Who would watch that? Or who goes on the internet? Funny enough, when we bought our first computer and we got the internet, I remember Calf's dad saying, but why would anyone want the internet? What is the point of that? But then when it came to looking at a hotel they were gonna to go to stay at, all of a sudden the internet was a great and wonderful place. Which, that was a, a, a few years later. Anyway. There we go, there's a little story about the internet and stuff. Right. What was the internet speed now? The internet... Sorry? Ability wants to know what speed the internet was back then. Well, back then, there wasn't megabytes or megabits. There was kilobits, which are thousandths of a bit. And I think our first modem was a 1440, which was actually 14,400 bytes per second. Is it kilo no, kilobits per second. So that was a tenth, is that a tenth of a megabyte? Yeah, a tenth of a megabyte. Wow, then we went to 33.6 kilobits and then we went to 56k and it's like woo 
you had a 56k modem, you were rocking. And then slowly broadband came out and you had IDSL, IS, ISDN lines, which are 64k or 128k, 256k if you were lucky. And then fiber, well not fiber, you had Virgin Media and cable. That was like 256, I think, or 512k. <laughs> nice. Uh, sorry, uh, Glenn says he's still using his AOL email address, which is uh, that's pretty cool. Now, for this particular bit, I'm going to have to lay the board, the case down, I think, because this isn't going to work. So, for um, televisual purposes, this is going to suck, but but from making my life easier, this is going to be uh, good stuff. So let's see. I am, I am completely honestly regretting this completely. Uh, hopefully I won't kick anything or move anything. I, oh. Yeah, I wonder if you'll see anything of that. So let's try, let's try on another camera, number four. So we've got our motherboard. So now we're gonna gently throw it in. In, in true verge fashion. And then we're gonna tie it down with cable ties. And then we're gonna cut those cable ties off with some tweezers. <laughs> what a dick. Yeah, that almost fits. Oh my days, I can't get past this, right. Sorry, what, Skystalker, what does Skystalker say? If you have cable internet in 1985, they were a test area. 1985-95? 95. Wow. That's pretty good. Because in the UK, we're always a little bit slow on the uptake for most of these things, so I think we got um, broadband in probably, what, 97? I don't recall exactly when. This is all so wrong. I don't like it. It's upsetting me already. Fans Good evening, 80s horror fan. If you want to watch horror, then you're in the right place. Because this is a absolute nightmare. This is Freddy's nightmare. What? One, two, three. An acoustic coupler? That's what they had in war games. And these that put the receiver on. That's cool. An acoustic coupler. How would our kids react to that? Well, they would have, there was a thing, uh, for those of you who are asking that, how would our kids react to dial-up? Put a dial-up telephone, like the old-fashioned one with the, uh, the numbers on that you have to ring round, put it in front of them and say, right, you've got 10 minutes to make a call on it. And they are not going to have a clue. They got it so easy. Although saying that, try and get kids to ride a bike. Lazy ass fools. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, when we had dial up, it was, I was having a really, really good game on uh, Counter Strike with some of my friends. And uh, a Angel wanted to be born, but I was having a really good game, so I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not hanging out the phone so you can phone the midwife. That is not going to happen, my friend. This is a really good game. Yeah, it's fine. Absolutely fine. And this is really difficult. I should have plugged this in beforehand, really. But again, that would not have made good televisual stuff. <laughs> Click Tech Kev says he was helping to design or did design the. Um, the little dispensers that give out the free serve disc or whatever it was. Is it free serve? Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, someone said, hello, is that a cat? Yeah, there is a cat. There's Flame hiding. Well, he's not hiding, he's sleeping. Lazy. Yeah, we've got to have a cat in the stream. It's, uh, if you're an internet person or you're on an internet, you have to have a cat or an animal because apparently that's cute. Right, I think I'm going to have to put this cooler on whilst it's in this position because otherwise it's going to be virtually impossible to do it both upside down. So just apply a small pea-sized amount from the tube. Not too much. And not loads of little dabs like uh, the Verge. That was funny. What did, I can't remember what Lyle said about that. It was funny though. And actually, before you do any builds, always make sure, do like a, a test, a bench test, to make sure that all your equipment works before you actually build it. Um, <laughs> like I haven't. So this could all go very wrong. And make sure you take off this thing, the warning sticker. Because if you don't take the warning sticker off, your uh, cooling results may vary drastically. No, actually, I just thought, did I have to have that that way round or was it the other way round? I didn't even look at the instructions. I should really look at the instructions because that could make me look a complete idiot, more so. Um, where's the box for that even? Where do I put a box? Yeah. Thank you. <sighs> the goal of this build is to post. If this thing posts, I'll be amazed. Uh, which way round did that go? Always check the instructions, kids. And that doesn't even show if it's that way round or not. A hey, holes? Oh, crap. Right, I did put the clips on round the wrong way. You'd think I'd know better because I've got the other PC there which has got them on right the right way. Jesus. Okay. It's no bother. Uh, yes, I am. I'm still using the Wi-Fi mesh, the uh, Tender, which actually there has been on, uh, on sale again recently, which is pretty cool. Uh, Amazon had it on for, I think it was 74 no, yeah, seventy pounds, which is ten pounds dearer than it was before. But is that right? Yeah. This is the one thing about coolers you have to get right. I get quite a lot of questions about this for the um, the freezer coolers, where people put them on around the wrong way, which I totally get because well, I just done it myself, and I've done a couple of these already. This is the third one I think I've installed. So it's, uh, it is very easy to do, but again, if you're not sure, that is what the instructions are for. Just hit up the instructions. And sorry, to go back to Sky Stalker's question, the, uh, the plan of this is to make it post. And yeah, it definitely is. That is the goal. Although just to get the damn thing built would be great. Well, I'm not going to be able to see if it posts properly because I don't have a monitor to plug it into. Because the monitor I want to plug it into is what you guys are watching. Well, I'm watching what you guys are doing on. And if I unplug that, I won't have a clue what's going on. Ah, that's why that screw didn't want to go in properly, because it's not meant to go in there. So, when you're doing these things, always put the screws in your mouth, in between. So you can talk funny. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. Why well, is just steaming our head? Anyway, hopefully this is entertaining for you people out there. Well, not entertaining, but better than watching whatever crap's on the BBC or HTV. There's probably something like, uh, I'm a celebrity, or what, what's those shows they have on? The singing ones? 
someone in the voice or someone's got talent or yeah you know what I mean anyway right that's that done where is the CPU connector it's really weird with upside down so CPU fan uh, I don't want that one do I want the rear fan oh, actually no I don't want rear fan because that's going to make things even worse I want CPU fan 2 that's the one I want that is the one I want ooh 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 This is in a really asshole place. Get in. So. Alexa has two cats and three large dogs on her bed at the moment. Wow. I don't think I'd even attempt to. So is that going to fit? That's a bit of a stretch right there. Hmm. So if I want the Cooler Master logo up the right way, let's see if I can grab the camera so you chat. Let's see. So, I don't know if you can see that. So if I want the Cooler Master logo, oh, actually it is gonna go. So if I want the Cooler Master the right way up, that is gonna be a bit of a stretch. I'm just gonna put some strain on it. Oh, sorry, I got a calf in that. Next time I'm going to move to that. So if I put it that way round, it's gonna be like that. Or if I put it that way round, that's gonna be better, but it's gonna be upside down. Oh dear. First world problem, my friend. So that works that way, but looks crap. That almost works that way and looks slightly less crap. That'll be a cat. Daisy, shush. That is on the internet. No, I am, honestly, really on the internet. Actually, that kind of works, almost. It's a little bit on the stretch side. What's the worst if it leaks? <laughs> oh, I don't like these cables. That is bad. Okay, let's put that back up. I think that's about the best I'm gonna be able to do. Again, not great. Uh, da -da. What is the thing? Number two. There we go. Well, it's on the other camera, calf. You can come back in if you want to. This is an absolute mess. That looks crap, I think. Although saying that, when the pipes warm up a little bit, that is going to settle down a bit. But that is quite tall there. That one will be fine. Hmm. I don't know. It does look a mess at the moment, so don't... Uh, this obviously isn't the finished product. Though it might be enough to finish me off. Put those. <laughs> Thank you, Paul Donaldson. I got. Do you know what? The stupid thing is, I got a magnetic parts tray behind my monitor over there. I got one on the side of the fridge. Why do I not use these things? Okie dokie. So that isn't going to go anywhere particularly nicely either, is it? I don't like this case. <laughs> Just like it. I generally don't like this case. I think for some people it's absolutely fine. But I don't know, there's something about that I just don't like the look of. I don't know, is it me being too fussy or does it just not look like it should? I don't know. What would Captain? Uh, what would Mick Jagger do with the cables? Mm. Yeah, because that's even pulling on that. Oh, I don't want it around the other way though, because that is going to be properly upside down. 
but I'm going to have to do it, I think. Or just revert back to A and B. The original bracket. <laughs> Air cooler. I don't want to give up though. Hmm. Jesus. If anybody else heard that noise, I don't know what it was either. Your phone? No. <laughs> you dropped your phone down the stairs? No, it's my foot. <laughs> no, is it funny? Uh, Tristan's asking, what do I do with the PCs that I build and do stuff with? Uh, generally, they're mostly here. Um, sometimes I get rid of things like the cases, which are a little bit big and bulky and a little bit of a pain in the butt. But yeah, generally, generally most of it ends up staying here. And generally, a lot of it gets recycled. In fact, a lot of the stuff in this build has been uh, recycled. And if it's not recycled, then we just chuck it in the sea. If those of you that are not sure what the hell I'm talking about, there's one of my uh, one of my friends who's a little bit uh, psychotic, and he likes to throw everything in the sea at the moment. And actually, I can I think I can use this cable now. I I was going to chuck this in the sea, but I don't think I need to because I think I can put that on there. Yeah, actually, this is coming together. This is like in the 18 when Hannibal gets a plan and it all comes together and he can smoke a cigar. I might be able to smoke a cigar, you know. Yes. This, my friends, is gonna work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a limb and say it's gonna work. It's all gonna be good. And I think I can live with upside down. At least I'm gonna have to for at least a week or so. Tristan Arthur, did I buy the case? No, I didn't, know. Um, for those of you that are just joining or a little bit late to the stream, this case was actually sent to me for review purposes by, um, I'm trying to think, who, who was the name of the person at Silverstone? I can't even remember the name now. I can't remember, but basically, uh, a contact at Silverstone, who, uh, I can't remember if we contacted them or he contacted us, actually. It was a while back. It's been one of those things we've been working on for a long time, Kath and I, with Silverstone. And um, with one thing or another, with holidays and all that kind of stuff, for some reason it just never got sorted out. So eventually we, uh, we sorted something out and said, oh yeah, oh, this is a new case. I think this case was actually released, I think it was at PAX in, back in May. And we were going to do something back then, but for some reason it never, never turned out. But anyway, so long story short, yeah, they've... Uh, They've kindly sent it to us for a review. Um, but they haven't said anything like, oh, can you please say this? Can you please say that? Which we don't generally go along with anyway, because, well, why would you? Reviews are review. If they don't like what you say, or if I don't like a product, then I just don't make a, well, I'll make the video, but I won't, I won't record it. Or, uh, sorry, I won't air it. I'll just get to the point where it's like, no, there's no point in doing this. It's, uh, it's not a great product and I'm not gonna waste time with it. Although saying that, if it's a product which I've bought myself and I find it to be rubbish, then of course, then I will do a review and I will let people know and say, do not buy this, it is junk, or do not buy it because of X, Y, Z. And then you can make your own decisions, decide if it's for you or not. Says you're gonna upset Greta. I'm gonna upset Greta? Uh, fortunately for me, there's a long, long line of people who have probably upset Greta in the past already, so I think I'm probably the least of uh, her worries. If, if she even... I... <laughs> Aletta says the sea is a good place to ditch bodies. It probably is, and 
I would imagine. No, actually, I'm not even going to say that. Some at night, so concrete galoshes work best. <laughs> Just dump it all in the sea. Don't worry about. Uh, what's her face? What's her name? Greta. And all those other bloody snowflakes. Let's put Brexit in the sea. That's a good one. Tristan Arifa says you must have 20 PCs. <laughs> I wish I... Well, actually, you probably have nearly that. Right, now this is confusing, so... Where is the... Hard drive LED, reset switch, power switch... No, power LED, power switch, isn't it? Is that right? Help me out here, guys, in the chat. On a motherboard I.O., when you're wiring up, top left-hand corner, pin number one, hard drive LED positive. Next one, hard drive negative. Next one, reset, plus and minus. Underneath those two, to the left-hand side, power switch, power LED positive, then negative, then power switch, plus and minus. Am I right? Because <laughs> otherwise this ain't going to boot and it's not going to be funny. Well, it'd be funny for you lot, not so funny for me. I'm gonna go with that. I'm pretty sure that's it. It's just working upside down. It's freaking me out. Bear in mind, I did the uh, the unboxing and review on this thing. I'm sure it's just so confusing with it being upside down. I'm gonna go with that. Too late, they already did it in um, Lethal Weapon. Oh, I've just put myself off now and done it around the wrong way. Because I can't get a light into it now. Right, there we go. So. Power switch plus and minus. Hard drive LED plus and minus. I bet I've got that around the wrong way. Power LED, oh bloody hell. Power switch, power LED, hard drive, hard drive LED, that's the one. Power switch LED, that's the one that's a problem. Give you a bloody galoot. Okay. Yes. Got it in, first time. Greta would be so proud of me right now. Who is Greta? Yeah. How dare you? That's what she said, wasn't it? How dare you? It's like, no, how dare you? You lot are the first generation of kids to have air conditioning on in every class. You to have all your electronic stuff. You on your iPads or iPods from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. You get cars like trucks to work. Whereas we used to walk or cycle or whatever. How dare you? There we go. Political bandwagon firmly attached. <laughs> she does take carrier bags and chucks them in the sea. Oh, that bit won't work anymore. I suppose we should at least have a power, not power, a uh, a sample cable. <laughs> a letter, I don't understand how that works, but good on you. Tristan Arthur got what? A new Samsung S5. I could do with a new phone myself. I'll tell you what, if you're entrenched in the Google kind of ecosystem, 
an iPhone is definitely, definitely not what you need in your life. It is an actual pain in the proverbial. Right. Andrew's back. Call off the search party. He's back, everyone. Although, if anybody wants to take over from me, please. <laughs> yeah, and expecting them all to give a different answer. Dipshit. Yeah, that was the 70s. Getting, le getting milk bottles delivered in recyclable glass on electric vehicles was basically the 70s. But because all the kids and all that didn't like the milk or oh, the, the cats have been at it or the foxes or the magpies have been pecking at the milk, I'm not drinking that. People, stupid people. But then saying that, we've got a lot to be thankful for as well from the computer generation and all that. The letter got it for a smartphone today, and I'm clear how to use it. A has got her smartphone today and doesn't know how to use it. So that puts you along with the other probably 15,000 and 100 and something other subscribers I've got who have come to me for the, exactly the same reason, because they can't use their phone. I get a lot of that. <laughs> I can never tell with Kev whether he's joking or not, but he says that his his dad was a milkman. Now, is that because the milkman just happened to be? I'm not going to go there. Oh, I need to get my cable ties now. That's not going to be easy. Yeah, those of you that are old enough to remember, we used to have like uh, milk bottles and you could take them back to the shops and you get money back for them. And back then you could like, you could buy sweets, like actual sweets, like a lot of them for about 10p. So you take your milk bottles back, get your 10p back on your milk bottle or Corona bottles or pop bottles or whatever, like Pepsi or Cola come in, but glass, take them back and they give you money. And then you could buy sweets. It's like, this is amazing. Mum sent me down to shops to take these bottles back and I'm buying sweets. It's just like a win-win, and I'm getting exercise because I'm walking to the shops and back. Why do those things not happen anymore? Well, I'm getting some cable ties. Or twisters, or whatever the stupid guy from The Verge called them. I kind of get that, I think. I'm not sure. Um, the spec is, um, oh Christ, that's my back gone. Uh, the spec of this PC is a Ryzen 5 2600, so nothing particularly outrageous. Uh, 650 watt gold rated power supply from our friends at, uh, who are they? Oops. That's the one. <laughs> I'm being kidding. Um, so RX 580, four gig. It's to be honest with you, it's not a good PC by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it's a perfectly acceptable gaming PC for like 1080p gaming, it, uh, medium settings. But the whole point of this really wasn't to um, to get a, a, like a PC out of it. The whole point of this really was actually to see if I can build in this case without it basically wanting me to kill myself or someone else. Or throw it all in the sea. And uh, there isn't a sale price on it because it ain't for sale. And I can't put a sale price on something which I don't know if it works. But if you were to buy the parts yourself from somewhere like PC Part Picker, I would estimate somewhere in the region of about £550 UK as a, a ballpark figure off the top of my head. I think that's probably in there, in there somewhere. I think probably someone in the comments would be able to chip in and confirm that or or deny it. Mm -hmm. Right, let's mount this hard drive in the cradle. 
please let there be some little screws. Yes, there it is. Ah, that's what these really tiny screws are for. Times like this would have been great to have a magnetic parts tray. Kev from Click Tech has said something that Kath cannot even say herself. What is it? Help her out. S spell it in caps. Was his name Ernie? Did he have the fastest milk cart in the West? Even though you're in the South. Well, no, you're in the Midlands, aren't you? Uh, yes and no. It's that is another thing about these uh, the cooler mastering. It's on thumb screws, so there isn't actually a reliable way or method of knowing if it's fully tightened. So it's a plastic pump housing with metal brackets and then thumb screws. So you've got a little bit of flex in the plastic, and you've got infinite variability in the thumb screws. So what I've done on the one behind me is I've tightened up sort of hand tight, then give it another little bit of a turn, then I've ran it for a little while to let it bed in and then check to make sure it's not loose after. And that's kind of, again, it's by no means a scientific way of doing it, but I think it's probably, probably the best I can do. And funny enough, it doesn't actually say in the instructions anything about it, how to do it. It's just like, yep, there's the thumb screws. These cable ties are made of recycled elephant foreskin, so they're absolutely 100% natural and uh, very strong. And, he says Greta has and if you rub them, they get longer. She probably does. Yeah, the uh, 600, is it? Okay, thereabouts. It's, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of the budget of this actually tied up in things which I probably wouldn't repeat. Power supply wise, I don't think there's any problem with that at all. The case, again, I think the jewelry is still pretty much firmly out on that one. Wasn't the in-win one upside down? Or was that just tiny? Um, no, the in-win one wasn't, no. Oh, the mini ITX? Yeah. No, that was... Uh, that was a normal deal. Yeah, tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Tristan Arthur, what am I going to do with the PC? Um, truthfully, I don't know. I was at one point considering using it as a, a replacement for the one which is behind me to give that one a little bit of a an airing out and change it, do something else with it. Um, again, I'm really not sure. I don't know how, how I feel about this build. I really don't. I don't know whether it's going to be I don't like the cable management either. I'm a bit concerned about that. Although it's kind of coming together now. We're not too far off. So looking at the cable management on the back, you've got this big bloody thing here, which um, there's not really a lot of room to work with in this bottom area. And these cables are pretty thick. So I think that's going to be okay once it's uh, compacted down. Again, all this could be done a little bit better. That's the power supply cable, which I'm just, uh, sorry, the graphics card cable, which I, I'm pretty sure is not going to reach the graphics card with all the luck in the world. So we are going to have to use an extension for that. Um, but all we've got left really now is the USB 3.0 and the HD audio, which I just realized the HD audio is going to be an absolute major ball error. Damn, that is going to be tough to get to, I think now. Oh no, it's not. No, that is actually perfectly easy because there's a hole here and that goes straight through. He says, uh, I can't see it, I can't see it. If Boris Johnson, uh, for those of you that aren't able to see the chat, so Captain Meat has asked if Boris Johnson was a tech, would he be a Betamax tech? Um, I gotta be honest with you. Um, I know this. Well, 
we sometimes dabble in a little bit of politics and all that kind of stuff. But I actually, I quite like Boris Johnson. And I know that's in, in the country at the moment, that's probably not a very popular thing to say out loud. Although, saying that, they do seem that they've got a lot of uh, clout in the Commons and all that. And it seems that the media don't particularly like him, but the people do. So that is reflected in the media, which I guess is almost an exact rerun of what is happening in America with President Trump, where the people actually are pretty much behind him. <clears throat> the ones that aren't are the ones that get seen on TV and in the media and get slated. So uh, it's a really weird situation. I don't get it. And there's people like the, the Greta girl, for instance, who probably in her own mind is very passionate about what she's saying. She has, she has got a point, but the way they go about it, they're never gonna achieve anything. It's just, it's all just marketing. And I think they've made her a bit of a scapegoat. Well, not a scapegoat, but like a, a poster girl, which is a bit pointless because to most people, she just seemed like some ranting idiot. There we go, political. Kaf can't say click tech. Kev, can you make your name something different? Eclectic. Eclectic Kev. I'm looking at water cooling parts and dreaming. Yeah, so am I at the moment. But Uletta says Mike, what's that piece out and replace it with Lillian Lee 011. <laughs> if I get enough super chats, I might just do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, probably, yeah, Boris Johnson is very much like a Microsoft Zoom, where actually it's a pretty good product and is, uh, actually works really well, but just hasn't grabbed the attention that it deserves. That is a bit political. I do apologise, everybody. Be better off with a Zolman Z11 Plus. <laughs> I bet that's come from Seaman Knight. Yeah. Seaman Knight says I'll be better off with a Zolman Z11 Plus, and I absolutely detest that case. I, <laughs> I'm actually saying that it probably would be easier than this thing right now. Captain Meads, Boris is Boris Johnson operating system Vista? <laughs> Captain Meat's gone crazy again. Someone reboot Captain Meat. He's malfunctioning. Tristan Arthur says, "Yeah, change to PC." And do you play darts? I think that answers your question. No, I don't play darts. I, I have watched darts, so. You've watched it about 180 times? Yeah, I have watched it 180 times. Well done, Kath, thank you. Only snowflakes don't like Trump. Who said that? Only snowflakes don't like Trump. Yes. Who do you think? I would say that has come from a letter, if I didn't yeah. know better. I'm a pretty reasonable let's judge of character. Who, who said the comment? Yeah, we're going to play who said the comment. So Kaf's going to read out your comment, and I've got to guess which one of you has actually said that comment. I can't believe this. I'm like halfway, well, not even halfway Trump through this. Great. Trump is great. So that I would imagine is by C. McKnight. No. Aletta? No. Skystalker. No. Oh no, I'm losing at this game already. Damn you. <laughs> Not a clue. Who said it? 80s horror fan. 80s horror fan said it. Sky Stalker, lol, a letter. I am sure other people may have opinions. And a letter said they do, but I actually don't care. Oh, this is where I'm not sure. Mike, right, who said this? Mike should be the host of the new revamp of Bullseye. <laughs> Uh, Mike should be the new host of the revamp of Bullseye. Who said that? Um, Tristan Arthur. No. <laughs> See at night. Yeah. <laughs> that is not bad. Um, what would you do with a bendy bully? Oh, uh, I don't know. Not what would I do with a bendy bully? I reckon you could sit proud. I would throw it in the sea, obviously, because <laughs> it's plastic. <laughs> I oh, know. Sit proud in that case. Yeah, I could put them in the case, and it'd be about anything of any use in there. Um, 
you know what? I'm not sure. But I think that's everything attached, apart from the graphics card. And obviously the cooling fan, because that ain't going to happen. Those we're not going to do because, well, we can't. Yeah, I think if we put the graphics card in, I think that is pretty much assembled. It's a bit of a dog's dinner. Oh, that didn't like that. Why did that not click into place? Okay. Right, that is in. That was a little bit easier. Do the Evolution 78. Mm. What's your opinion of the Rose Wheel Challenger SK? Can you give the pros and cons? Thank you. Um, someone just asked a question, and I think their name was uh, Do the Evolution 78. My opinion of the Rosewheel Challenger S case, pros and cons. Um, I don't know, is the honest answer. I'm not sure, I don't think I've even, I can't recall seeing that case. So I'm not entirely sure. Now, for some of you who don't know already, someone's just joined the, um, the stream, the Custom Adventurist. And yeah, it's finally a live stream without age restriction. Custom Adventurist is a uh, reviewer from the good old US of A, potentially even Canada, I'm not entirely sure, but somewhere in that region. And Custom Adventurist has done a load of reviews on AirPods and AirPod clones, all the kind of stuff that I've been doing. And I'm pretty sure he works with Spin and Deal and Nokia's, same as I do, and a few others as well. So some of our products have overlapped and quite often I've gone to see what his reviews are like when I've had a product and I was like, mm, not too sure about that, what's going on? So then I've checked his review and he's had similar kind of things. So it's kind of nice to get a gauge of what's going on with uh, some of his videos. So if you want to check out AirPod videos and stuff, right click on his profile and go over to his channel. Mm -hmm. Click on subscribe and like and all that other kind of stuff. All uh, right, yeah, Rose Will is predominantly, I think is, yeah, is mostly American. Well, where is my extension cable? Ooh, there somewhere. I can't remember what they look like now. They're black and white, weren't they? Yeah. These are my shack mod cables, which are in here somewhere. What are they in here now? Oh, that's nice. Aletta's uh, girlfriend, partner, lover, whatever, I don't know, is uh, gone and bought some gas station hot dogs. Hello. Yeah, I could do them right now. They probably make better thermal paste than what I've been using. Where have my cables gone? Oh. You've got them in a PC somewhere. I think they're in a computer. No, they've got to be in here. <clears throat> Tristan Arthur, how much is the RGB case worth? Uh, what, the one behind me? This is bizarre, I only had those cables out the other day, didn't I, to have a look at them. I don't know where I put them. Put them inside a box, didn't I? Which box? PC, I mean, with the oh, well, the one in the background. If it's the one in the background, uh, again, I have not got a clue. I generally don't add up what the, the components and parts are worth because they're only really worth anything if I'm selling them, and I don't generally sell them. So I just keep on adding to it until I uh, can't have no more. Oh, what have I done with the extension cable? That is going to be the end of the build, isn't it? What's that? Is Mike changing into Gordon for PC I probably am. It is all going a bit Pete Tong already. All right, let's see if I can stretch that cable. Or, alternately, 
if there is, where's the Silverstone box? There. I wonder if, by any luck or stroke of judgment, they actually have got a longer cable in here. Because that could save my bacon right now. What the hell have I done with those cables? Which PC would I be even use them in? I've had those shack mod cables lying around <laughs> for literally months now. Maggie's Burger King or <laughs> KFC or Subway. Maggie's Burger King or Subway, you choose. Now, Burger King, I haven't been to a Burger King in ages. When was the last time we went to a Burger King? Like, I don't think we've even been this century, have we? Damn, they're all the same length. Burger King, Burger King. Did we get, is that when we went and they got the order wrong? That was McDonald's, wasn't it? We did go out once. Tristan Arthur, I'm afraid I don't know the answer. I have not got a clue. Not a Scooby Doo. Right, okay, let's put that down there before I break it. Have you put in any boxes? Yeah, I'm trying to think which. <laughs> Underneath this table, there is a ton of boxes and extensions and other stuff. But I don't know which one it's gonna be in. I could have put it in one of the in-win cases. But I don't wanna pull all that out because that is gonna be a disaster. Right, let's have a look at this cable, see if we can reroute it. Yeah, we'll make do, make do and mend. Let's get this back on the front because that's something else we don't have to worry about. Actually, now that it's kind of almost semi-done, it's not too bad. I think actually part of it is when you're doing these builds is you get to a point where it's like, oh God. Ah, I know where those cable bits are. Why? I bought them for the... Design. Cooler Master power supply, which is currently in my in-win case over there. So that is in the white in-win box. Woo! So that is, oh crap. There's a lot of stuff on top of this box. Captain Meat thinks Greta lives under the table. Greta's under the table. She is currently digging a hole down to the uh, underground stream and plastic throw in plastic bits in it. Through the plastic lamp. Yeah. <laughs> no, I trust and I genuinely don't. Uh, which one is it? That one behind me? All right, let's have a quick total. Um, the case itself, I haven't got a clue. Can't remember how much that was because it was sent to me. All the fans and the LEDs were sent to me as well, so I didn't actually pay for them. Um, the motherboard, processor, and RAM, I swapped for a Intel i7 2700K plus 200 or 300 pounds. So that shows you how long ago it was. Um, not a clue. The cooler, RGB cooler, uh, Cooler Master cooler cost me 22 pounds and 60 something P. But other than a uh, graphics card, the Sapphire RX Nitro Plus cost me, how much did we pay for that, Kath? That was in the other day, wasn't it, on PayPal? So 110, 120? It's about a hundred pounds, something like that. Dun dun dun, Cooler Master, please be in here. So it looks like I actually have got a memory. Yes. Cable mods. Who would win in a fight is the question. A Greta or Swampy? Now Greta is the kind of, the snowflake version of Swampy, because Swampy was actually hardcore, and he would go and sleep in a tree for ages. Whereas Greta probably was like, well, I'm not gonna go and do any protesting until I've had at least one vegetarian sausage. Dick. <laughs> Sorry, I do apologize. Okay, right. Is that the right one? No, nope, that's not it, because that's the EPS. So it must be that one. 
No, why does that not want to go in there? Oh, I hate these cable extensions. Why does that not fit? I think this is why I didn't use them before, because they just don't want to work. Unless that's the EPS. So, yep, that's EPS. Why do they make EPS extensions and PSU extensions look exactly the same? So that's correct. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that should work. But it doesn't want to. Why do you not want to go in the bloody thing? Assholes. Should Gretchen nurse a rabid fox or a badger with TB? You decide. <laughs> That's got to be Captain Meat who's just asked that. Um, I don't know. I think, I, I feel sorry for Greta. I genuinely do. I think she's, uh, she's been given a hard time. Because you, you know, like, you, some of you probably feel me when, when I'm uh, saying this, but most of you are probably at a certain age where you've got a bit of life experience and you kind of, you know how the world works and all that. Now, when you're at school, I would pretty much guarantee most of you at some point or other would have been doing something about anti-drugs or anti-smoking or anti-whatever it is. And then kind of 10 years later, five years later, whatever, you're the same person, but you're there and you're smoking away and you're drinking and you're gambling or whatever. All the things you kind of protested about when you were told to at school by your teachers and stuff. And when you're younger, I think that's what it is. A lot of the, the society takes advantage of that stuff. And they kind of like, well, yeah, you should be saying this is bad. And kids, we're going to do this this week. This week, is this is going to be, right, we're going to do Global Warming Week. And we're going to make a big thing about it all. And then kind of you leave school and you haven't got that person telling you what you should or shouldn't be doing. And suddenly you're like, actually, I don't care. I just want to make a living and look after my family. Because that's the only thing that's really important. Yay, that works now. And I think that's what it is. Kids at school, they get brainwashed into believing what society or the curriculum or whatever wants you to believe. And that's just what ends up happening. And most of the time, it's all BS. Sorry, am I being too political again? I do apologise if I am. But I think that is a big problem these days with society. Kids are kind of programmed to doing stuff and then they get a bit of notoriety because of the kind of the Facebook generation and all that. And then it just gets out of hand and then you get this whole Greta thing where the poor kid's probably been pushed around by so many people to say certain things. She probably doesn't even know what she's saying half the time. And she gets super animated and upset about it, which is clearly not good for any kid to be upset to that extent. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel sorry for her in some respects. And that should probably go up there, shouldn't it? Well, it's not the prettiest of builds. I can certainly say that without any uh, hesitation. And I'm not going to cable manage this because I can't see it staying very long, if I'm completely honest. I'm not sure if I like those cables there or not. What do you think so far? Tristan was sectioned in a mental hospital for the last five months. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Tristan. It's never good to be uh, to be unwell. Uh, why is that? If there was an anti-drugs and an anti-drinks, <laughs> that's got to be. See, no, that is got to be Captain Meat's adventure saying, if there was an anti-drugs and an anti-thing. Then who is your gran? Hey, Sky Stalker. Oh. No, don't think so. Sky Stalker's kindly given us ten Canadian US dollars or whatever they are. Bless you, my friend. And you've made Kafka up. 
She's got cat hair stuck to her butt. I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to say nothing. Does the case look better in the dark? <laughs> Wow. Okay, that is that done. So that kind of, that works, ish. Where's the screws? Give me the screws. Now after all that, I didn't put the two NZ, NZ, NZXT fans in the top, which I actually probably should have done really. Well, let's see, I think we're pretty much ready for a boot, which is not bad because it's only been two hours. I'm certainly not within uh, Mr. Holzman's territory yet because I've actually finished it. No offense. Carrie, if you're watching, God bless you. Actually, no, you won't be watching because you'll be counting your cash from all those poor people that you've taken money off of, like those veterans who need the money more than you do, but they give you it because they think you're some kind of messiah. Anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> Greta is confused by all of the smoke from the plastic that she has been burning. Bad, bad person. Now, I think that smoke tint is too dark and all we're going to see when this turns on is a big old Cooler Master logo, which is probably not going to be the best thing. And I probably shouldn't really have put all the side panels on before we did a test. But anyway, let's try it. So, Do you want my monitor? I need a monitor. I need something. Um, actually, no, I can plug that one in, but I just won't be able to see what's going on in the chat or anything. Read it up to date then. Uh, right, let's read the comments quickly before I plug this in because I won't be able to see anything. Uh, da -da. Tristan Arthur says he's 31. I wish I was 31 again, that would be pretty sweet. Look at my saggy ass in these jeans, like trousers are hanging down and everything. I'm gonna have to pull my shit up. Hang on. That's it, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fort moving function, if it works, it's good. For a given value, yeah, I've good, yeah, true. Uh, Tristan Arthur says he's a lot better now. That's good to hear, mate. Uh, put the exhaust fan in. Oh yeah, I didn't put the exhaust fan in. Oh, okay. Let's put the exhaust fan in before we do our test boot. That is pretty important that we do at least have something in there to exhaust all this hot air, which probably won't be generated when it doesn't boot. <laughs> and it gives me another opportunity to smash this glass panel, which is way too dark. Uh, where did I put the fan? Oh, there it is. Right, let's have a... Maisie! You're wet and you're all over that nice shiny box. Which I might have to send back. Oh, now I'm tied up in my microphone. Hang on, let's do the twist. Dun, dun, dun. I did last summer. There we go. I did that last summer, you know. <laughs> oh, this has been a terrible, terrible experience. Actually, that no, hasn't been too bad to be fair. Could have been a lot worse, couldn't it? Right, let's take the uh, the tweezers off or the cable ties. Right, so I think it's best if I put this on first of all, give a rough test fit, then we'll put some cable ties or twist sticks or whatever the heck you want to call them. I did notice actually the fan header is in a really peculiar, awkward place in this board. So we've got Silverstone case fan. This is a 1200 RPM, which is called the, it did have a name on it. Hongua. HA11, uh, 1225L. It is horrifying, says you have lovely hips. Eat your heart out, Kim K. <laughs> uh, thanks, I think. We could do some serious cable management on this bitch. Let's see if we can break everything. Oh, poor old Greta. I read that somewhere in one country they actually put like a 
a picture of her, like a hateful picture, and hung it from a bridge or something. It's like, come on, she's a kid. Yeah, she may not be a bit aggravating and all that, but she, essentially she's still a kid. Sky Stalker's got to go. Sky Stalker's got to go. Oh, you'd have to... <laughs> yeah, on the replay, hopefully... Oh, no, actually, I can't edit this, can I? Because it's a live stream. Well, hopefully it'll boot. You never know. Well, thank you for your kind donation, and uh, you have a great day. And try to throw things in the sea, because it upsets a letter. Uh, not a letter. <laughs> it upsets Greta. Greta and a letter. Could be the same person. Never seen them in the same room at the same time. Just saying. All right, let's see if I can make a right mess of this. So it's never easy to do when you're trying to do it camera facing. I don't know how these YouTubers do it. They're just legends, all of them. Okay. Whoa, easy. Now there is one downside of this graphics card, which I, like I said earlier, I swapped for an old GTX 970, which at the time actually I thought is a, a pretty decent deal. But as it happens, I think there's something a bit screwy with the BIOS of the card. So if you switch over into uh, turbo mode, it just blue screens and all that kind of stuff. Well, not blue screens, it just, yeah. It, don't, it doesn't work well, is what I'm trying to say. So not all that glitters is gold, my friends. Um, that could have gone a little bit better, but what the heck. All right, let's chuck a power cable in and it'll go bang. All right, is there any important messages I need to read right now? Uh, bye Sky, bye Sky, worth a view, what's left of the day, it's been a good one, blah, blah. A letter says, you'd never see me in the same room at the same time ever. It's true. This is very true. Right, I'm gonna unplug that. And I'll probably, if that messes up the stream, I'll do, a, oh crap, that's not long enough. <laughs> oh, you absolute a-hole. Right. I'm gonna have to, can I, can I, I can reconfigure this HDMI cable, because it is, oh my lord, everything's falling apart. This is designed to be easy to use this uh, setup at the moment. We uh, went through a lot of second of work. Hallelujah. Oh, I've tied myself up in cables again. <laughs> ah, right, HDMI, there we go. Right, we haven't got a keyboard and mouse plugged in, which potentially could cause an issue. Um, what the hell? Let's just plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so we've got some, some stuff happening there. So there's a power button on the front somewhere. I think that's it there. So. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> oh, you sure it's power I bet it's that power switch ran the wrong way. Which would be aggravating. That is the power button. Can you guys sense the uh, the feeling right now? Oh, and that that is right in the wrong place as well to get to, isn't it? Because that right. Let's disconnect those and uh, let's just do it the old-fashioned way. There we go. Jump started with a screwdriver. That always works. Eventually, and we got a Cooler Master LED. We've got a nice bit. Thanks for that. <laughs> or we're we going to get an output. Please come on. Normally, with a new motherboard from AMD, it's probably the second or third one. And. They can't see that. You have to twist the camera around, Kath. No, you can use that other one. Did that not work? Um, it oh, might okay. do, but I can't tell which one is on. Okay. 
Uh, which one is it on? Oh, you can see it now. There you go. Azrock boot screen. And with any luck, if it picks up the SSD, which it should do, really, I should have gone into the BIOS and done F, uh, did F whatever it was, or delete and configured it. But hopefully it should just work because it is a very, very similar setup to the previous one. And actually, consider, well, you guys can probably hear because I've got my, uh, <laughs> I only said my labia mic is not a labia mic. That's a different thing altogether. <laughs> oh dear, what time is That's it? Me, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I've got a flashing red thing on there. What's that going on then? Is that what it means? Oh no. Oh. Hey! I just buy that. So we got a boot. What, what? Huh? <laughs> hey, look, it's even going into the thing. So, oh, amazing. That's pretty cool. Now, we don't appear to have any internet, so that's obvious because that's not plugged in. But do you know what? Considering I've done zero maintenance or anything to the BIOS, that isn't bad. Uh, twist that back leg round. That's it, that should give it. There we go. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, that'll do. Kind of. Just trying to see what the camera's doing. Oh, yeah, we've gone too far. Oh, no, solid, that'll do. So, what do you think? It actually works. I obviously, I wired up the, um, the front I.O. panel completely wrong, or potentially there is a problem with the I.O., which will need rectifying, but... Those fans are doing a pretty good job, and there's some uh, there's some pretty decent cool air coming in there. Now again, it would have been nicer to have that radiator on the front, I think, to get more more airflow through. But there's actually a decent amount of airflow going through there, and with that fan on the back, not bad, not too shabby at all. I'm uh, I'm moderately impressed that a it worked, and b I don't think it actually looks that bad. Is a little bit mismatched. The RAM sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm not happy about that. Obviously, the RGB is uh, a bit of an issue at the moment. But given time, I think I could learn to love it. I think. Let's try and plug this in. If this is running the wrong way, it's going to suck. Um, now, when you plug these in, it's generally a 50 50 if it's going to work or not. So, this might just kill the board or it might light up. Oh, actually, is that the. that way, isn't it? Bang! <laughs> Would you stop doing that? Well, that appears to work. So, it may not be the best. Oh, Don't stick that in there. That's not a good thing to do. <laughs> there we go. It may not be perfect, but at least it's got some RGB. And actually looking at it on the screen over there, just adding a little bit of RGB, in my humble opinion, it does actually add a bit to it. Hmm? Can you do it into white? I can do it into white if I had a keyboard and mouse, which I don't have. I think that looks all right. I think the fan speed is a little bit high. On. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Right, so that's what was making the noise, though, is those Cooler Master fans. So we can adjust those a little bit. Why are they making that stupid noise? I think it's probably just because they're set a bit high. And they're Cooler Master, so they're not the greatest anyway. Because we hate Cooler Master. Okay, I think that um, yeah, pretty much does it. Hopefully, this hasn't been uh, too painful for you all. It's, uh, I could be honest with you, it's been pretty darn painful for me at times. It's not the easiest of desks to work it's with. Really cool. and yeah. It's really difficult to do upside down. I challenge any of you to try it for yourselves, to do a build 
and just build it in the case upside down. It's so off-putting. Like, I suppose, yeah, I could turn the case upside down to make it the right way up again. But it just, it just seems so peculiar. All the things that you've learned, like how to wire up an IO header, I've done those. I used to build like 10 PCs, 15 PCs a day. And it was like, you could almost do it blindfolded. But just because it's upside down, it just really messes with your mind. The muscle memory and all that kind of stuff is really, really freaky. I'm going to put a side panel on, see what it looks like with a side panel on. And I think it's probably going to suck because all you're going to see is that LED here and a little bit of Cooler Master. How does that look? I can't. It's difficult to see what it looks like straight on and. Mm, yeah, I'm not a fan of the visible RGB LEDs, to be honest with you. I prefer to s either not see them or have them bouncing off of something else. Oh. Sound drivers are installed. Oh no, what is that? Oh no. Did that just reboot itself? I wasn't even watching. I didn't hear it turn off, did you? And I just realized some of the RGB, which is in the, um, the South Bridge or the IO Bridge, actually gets completely covered up by the graphics card. So it's almost pointless having it down there. Although you do get a bit of a backglow from it. Ah oh well. We tried. We've done what we can. And yeah, I think it's not turned out too bad. The case itself, I actually genuinely do like the look of it. No, I haven't. <laughs> Calf just asked if I had thumb screws in the glass and I haven't. I'm a bad, bad person. So I'm gonna put those back in. But what do you think of the case? Honest comments, either in the comments section if you're watching this as a, uh, a repeat or later after show DVR kind of thing, or even now in the comments, let me know. What do you think? What is your honest opinion of this? Despite the, uh, the pig's ear I've made of actually building the damn thing, what do you think about it? Would you actually consider going for this case yourself? Now, it, the kind of 110 pounds in the UK, I've got to be honest with you, I would be out. I would not go there. I would probably go for a Meshify or possibly an Inwin. In fact, actually, the Inwin 101C would probably be my, my choice. If it's Micro ATX, that does limit your choices. So you're either at the real budget end of the market with kind of the... Uh, Game Max Kamikaze would be a fantastic choice. Um, the Thermaltake T, no, was it the, what was the Thermaltake one, Calf? The 20 or something, or 21, T21? Whatever it is, the little, the little cube one, Thermaltake, that's a pretty oh, good option. V21. Um, there's one or two others, the Rio Toro possibly, but as far as micro ETX goes, there aren't that really many good choices you can make. Um, I'm interested to see how this runs, temperature-wise. And actually, the more I look at it, the more I like it. See that light says Game Max Mini Callus. Yeah, the Game Max Mini Callus is actually a pretty good shout as well for a micro ATX. Limited on airflow. We, this is one of the things where this actually excels itself, because you have got some fantastic airflow there, and you've got a lot of filtration, which again is a pain in the backside when you have to keep on cleaning dust out. But actually looking inside here now, oh, I, yeah, this is really annoying me because actually I do quite like it. And the way the camo print on the motherboard is being kind of reflected by the RGB in there actually does look quite nice in a weird way. If I could angle it so that I can't see the LEDs dare we dream that that is a possibility, that we can do that so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Those fans con uh, headers need configuring badly because that droning noise is doing my head in. So if we turn that round on its side, and try not to put it in the fan, again, Oh, 
Come on, stick there, you bloody thing. Do as you're told. Computers are supposed to take orders from humans. It's the law. Greta said. You are less <laughs> now, obviously, that is going to take some uh, some cable tying or glue in. What do you reckon about that now? Now we've got the uh, the lights not overpowering on the side. Let's see. I uh, don't want to turn around too much in case the lights fall over. There we go. Can you see that now? Hey Google, turn off the studio lights. All right, leave the unboxing reviews one and how to one. That's fine. I can live with that. Hey Google, turn it. I'm freezing. <laughs> Let's see if I can turn it around a bit more so you can actually see it. Hey Google, I'm freezing. Is there a glass there? Oh yeah. There. That's reflecting. It's reflecting your monitor. Not me. Thanks. I've gone back. But there you go. You get an idea. I actually think that looks pretty slick. That's not my monitor. That's your monitor. Oh yeah, it's my monitor. No, oh, it's not it's yours. Because mine's still doing something. Oh, it's reaching. No, it's that one. Oh, I know why that's going on now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Monitor? I got yeah. Like hey Google, turn on the studio lights. Bright light. Anyway, there you go. It looks like that device hasn't been set up yet. Oh, shut up. Do no, don't do it now. Do it some other time. Okay, so there we go. Let's uh, let's wrap this up because this has been going on for a bit too long now, and we're in nighttime hours already on my watch, which means I should be in bed because I've got work tomorrow. Actual work. Anyway, mm, frustrating. Uh, if I was to use one word to sum up this, I would say frustrating. Now, frustrating for many reasons. One, I think, is a missed opportunity. I think that this chassis turned on its head. Not necessarily the basement area, but the actual um, motherboard area, the graphics card and all that. If this was turned 180 degrees, this would be an amazing chassis to work with. And I think it would be much, much better for most people. The upside down thing, again, aesthetically, most PCs these days have got something blingy going on inside, whether it's a bit of RGB on the motherboard, illumination on your cooler, uh, most stuff these days you buy has got some form of branding on it, whether it's your AMD cooler or whatever it is, everything's got some branding on it. So to have that branding turned 180, A, disrupts that branding. It doesn't look right because it doesn't make, because we're so pre-programmed to it. If you see a McDonald's sign and it's upside down or on its side, you don't always recognize it. You know what it is, but your brain doesn't say that's a McDonald's because your brain's been trained to recognize logos in a certain fashion. So to have things upside down, first of all, is disorientating. Um, in certain way, in certain instances, it can work out well. Like in this, actually, it doesn't look too bad. I could put something over the Cuda Master logo. The Steel Legend is kind of vertical, so it can work either way. It's not a deal breaker, but it still is, I feel, a missed opportunity. I could have put the Sapphire graphics card in there and that would look really weird because Sapphire would be totally upside down, which would make no sense at all. Like the Cooler Master logo at the moment doesn't really make sense. It just adds confusion. The whole idea of building a show PC or a nice looking PC is so that you look at it, it's easy on the eye and it, the more you look at it, it makes sense. And if it's got water cooling, you follow the water paths and the cabling and all that kind of stuff, which is why we take time and effort to build PCs. But having it upside down like this is, it is kind of weird. And it is limiting as well, because putting a radiator in the top of there, it's gonna hit the graphics card if you use a standard size radiator. So you're limited there. They do say in the manual that you can use a 15 mil radiator or a 15 mil fan, but have you seen the price for a 15 mil radiator? It isn't cheap. 
which adds on to the price already that you're paying out for all this, is it really worth it for Micro ATX? Probably not. So I'm gonna have a quick look at the, no I'm not, because I can't see the screen. I'm gonna plug the uh, monitor back in. Actually, just turn, oh, I was gonna say I'll turn it off, but I can't because the IO doesn't work. Ha <laughs> ha, ah dear. These things are sent to try us. Right, let's put that back right there. And I'm back in the room, possibly. Oh, unwind the cable again. <laughs> okay, so let's have a quick run through some of Aletta's Chrome Crashed. Yeah, you don't wanna use that, it's rubbish. Uh, black screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, da -da, da -da. Oh, need to go down. No, you're, you... Oh, sorry, I need to go down a bit. I do apologize. I'm trying to read what's on the screen. Okay, so um, Tristan Arthur says the PC looks about 200 quid's worth. Um, possibly not. <laughs> The case is, uh, yeah, it's not great. Weird design, high price and no extended ATX. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah, Seaman Knight says, I think we'd rather have the Lan Lee. I think the Lan Lee is gonna be the way to go. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this now. I may persevere with it and see how I get on. It's, yeah, frustrating. It's a missed opportunity, I really feel it is. I really, really love the look of the front. It's got so much potential if it is the full size or even the micro ATX, but with that rotated 180, I genuinely think this would be a fantastic case and I would certainly buy it. it it's got so much in common with the uh, Fractal Design Define TG, CTG? Yeah, one of those anyway. But with full airflow on the front rather than the choked off front panel that the, uh, the Define C has. But yeah. Frustrating, a, a definitely a missed opportunity. I know I keep on harping on about it. It's always disappointing when you have a case which, all I want is the perfect case. You'd think that it isn't too much to ask. I would love it if a, a manufacturer came to me and said, Mike, help us design the perfect case. Because I think I probably could. I think I've had enough experience and feedback from you guys and girls out there to know what actually makes a good case. And I'm sure we could take a lot of those lessons that we've learned in case design and usage and actually put it into a chassis, which doesn't have to cost an absolute fortune, but can actually revolutionize PC building and make life easier and give everyone like a, a really easy choice rather than the kind of compromises that we make in various cases, whether the compromise be it costs a shitload of money or the compromise being it's difficult to build in or the compromise is it's not got good airflow or the compromise that it's just, yeah, rubbish or upside down. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, um, <laughs> uh, Aletta says, I'm building my next case. It will be a water cooled glass top table. Do you know what? I would quite like one of those. Calf just said, would you have fish in it as well? No, because you'd have to keep it on all the time then to keep the temperature constant. If it was cold water fish, eventually you'd cook them. Although... Actually, I've got cats and dogs as well. Sushi? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Right, guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for tonight. Thank you all so much for uh, bearing with me and going through this, uh, this trial. It's a shame it didn't go a little bit easier, and I would like to have done a bit more with it, a bit more cable management, and some things, again, have been quite frustrating like the PCI Express cable not being long enough to go into the graphics card without looking awful from coming from the front is one of those kind of no-brainers especially when the power supply and the case come from the same company it seems like a bit of a, a strange thing to happen but anyway like I said before let me know in the comments what you think of it all um, good bad indifferent I'm quite happy to hear all your comments and if you want to critique my build feel free to do so Hey, we're all human and we're all learning as we go along. And uh, this one has certainly been a bit of a learning curve. So again, thanks everyone for watching and we'll catch you again next Saturday night, nine o'clock. And don't forget to tune in. And for those of you that super chatted, thank you so much for helping support the channel. And for those of you just been here watching and taking part, thank you all as well for 
helping us to grow the channel. We've just hit 15k subs, so uh, we're slowly getting there. We'll get some recognition sooner or later. You mark my words. Anyway, Calf says good night. I say good night. The cats are all tired. They want to go to bed, so we'll uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh.